Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Devani, the Total Connector. As part of a, a series of educational, you know, episodes on, on how, you know, especially for the target group of noobs, merchants, you know, beginning or average users out there. Um, and according to the principle, you know, do not trust, verify, become a self-sovereign Bitcoin citizen. So uh, we are not there yet. I know it's, it's uh, you know, we've got to go a long way. But um, so I have, you know, again, my special guest is Ben Kaufman. And um, he also has been also working on the Spectre Desktop, which is going to uh, talk about, I want to pick his brains about, you know, running a full node. What do you need to be careful about, especially as a, as a beginning average user, as a noob? why why do you do specific things you know with the full node what can you connect with it um, how can we onboard the merchants how can we build and implement an alternative opt-in uh, bitcoin denominated infrastructure what are the main concerns of merchants you know integrating into their uh, you know cashier system or accounting system or what have you so there are questions over questions and i don't think generic videos or instructional tutorials can really help that so uh, i think we need more immediate direct face-to-face -face, uh, support people who are who should be and uh, could be fairly compensated uh, would it be one person or a team of people going to the merchants and helping so anyway without further ado is my talk with ben kaufman hope you uh, enjoy this and please uh Subscribe if you haven't yet on my YouTube channel or on, many, on any other podcast platforms uh, and retweet it, like it, follow me, would uh, help me tremendously. Thank you so much. And here's my interview with uh, Ben Kaufman. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ben, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for your time again. Uh, ben, so what I want to talk to you about is, um, um, you see, uh, I've had some, um, me personally, I've had some issues uh, with um, with, my, uh, with my full node. And I, it took me like a week till, you know, I turned my Casa 2 into a full node. And um, for the people on, um, on um, YouTube, uh, this is what it looks like, right? So uh, for OPSEC reasons, I can't show more. Uh, so... Um, you know, and I thought, okay, if, you know, if it takes me more than a week, you know, to figure out like small details, like trial and error, uh, technical issues, connectivity, or something doesn't work as, as, you know, as described in the description or, you know, the videos that are put out, you know, really great videos by either, uh, Ben of BTC sessions or Ketan. Uh, you know, who works with Stephen Levera on Ministry of Nodes. I really appreciate that great mm -hmm. work. But I think for the average person out there, I would, that's the reason I want to talk to you and sort of uh, prepare maybe, you know, uh, a bunch of educational videos, like the common errors, the common mistakes, uh, you know, the, the common technical issues people could run into. And uh, this is uh, explicitly not to be, uh, you know, considered for intermediate and advanced users, but for beginners, you know, who just want to set up mm -hmm. the full node, maybe, you know, connect one or two or three applications or lightning wallet. For example, in my case, I, it was like, that was the easy part. Like the easiest part was to connect my mobile samurai wallet to the, to my own dojo. That was like the easiest part of all the whole process. But that's why, you know, after I, I did the whole thing, I managed to, you know, to set it up. And, and I see, you know, so many questions in the Telegram groups, would it be in my node or in other groups? But uh, it's just, you know, understandable that people just don't have the time and resources. They're, most people are, you know, they're working on these projects. They are, you know, open source projects. They are, uh, they are dependent on grants, donations. So people don't have the human or capital or any kind of, you know, uh, uh, resources to, to allocate, you know, time and really support, like really empathetical support to, to the average user out there. And this is the whole goal and purpose and objective of, of this planned talk with you. Uh, uh, but before we do that, um, why don't you just, you know, again, um, um, tell a little bit about yourself and I know you, you've been working on, on, on the Spectre desktop. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Uh, yeah, sure. So yeah, um, lately I've been working uh, with the guys from uh, Crypto Advance, 
So we're mostly with uh, Stepan, Stepan uh, Singrev, I hope I pronounce it correctly. Um, and also with, um, sorry, with, uh, what, how, how do I, oh, sorry, yeah. So also with, with Stepan and with Kim and with, uh, with Moritz, uh, well, Moritz is not on the technical side, but he's the guy from Crypto Advance who founded the company. So I've been helping them a bit with Spectre Desktop, which is uh, basically an alternative GUI for uh, for Bitcoin Core. So Bitcoin Core is great, but it's hard to use. Its UI is very bad, and I probably won't change in the in the near future. There's no intention to to make it easier. Uh, from various reasons. Um, so Spectre, uh, Spectre Desktop is supposed to give uh, a simple UI to create uh, wallets, to use wallets with your full node and use hardware wallets and multi-sig with basically all the major hardware wallets uh, in a secure and, and private way. Um, so yeah, so I've been helping uh, to, to create that, to, to build that in the last, uh, I guess, month or two, I, I think. Um, and yeah. So who's the target audience for the Spectre desktop? Is that the like merchants or intermediate advanced users? Or is it also like, or, or what's, the, what's the purpose like to facilitate to, uh, or to, you know, make it easier, mm -hmm. the, the handling, the yes. operation? Yes. Yes. So basically, like what Spectre does, it it doesn't invent something new. It just make it simpler to to use existing tools, I guess. So, for example, for hardware wallet use, there is already like for Inspector itself, we use what's called hardware wallet integration, um, H W I from from the Bitcoin Core guys. So I think Andrew Cho and uh, uh, Instagibs are uh, are maintaining this repository. So this is just like a command line tool with also with core like basic GUI for uh, for using hardware wallets, um, but it doesn't really it's it's not really useful for the average user who uh, you know who's uh, who wants to just uh, you know wants to use like a simple uh, UI for that. Uh, it doesn't support very well. Um, for example, multi six, which Spectre allows. Um, Bitcoin Core itself doesn't uh, support hardware wallets, uh, which Spectre using that uh, hardware wallet integration tool uh, allows. So it just combines like the the uh, powerful backend of of Bitcoin Core and uh, the uh, bridge built uh, by HWI and just create something which allows. Any average user, anyone who who can operate the mine node, to to use to use it with also with Spectre to use uh, their hardware wallets uh, both as multi sig and single sig with their own full node. Okay, like somebody, like for myself, like would would that be would that be an advantage to use to use it? Or what what kind of advantage mm -hmm. or value would that would that you know? Bring that for me, you know. Yeah. I have like, like my node, full node. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So with my node, you can use I, I am you can use Electrum, which gives you some of these features, but isn't very great uh, in terms of UI um, and in terms of device support, if I remember correctly. Um, so Spectre improves a lot on that, so it gives you much better UI. Um, you can use basically instead. So the benefit of using Spectre compared to Electrum is, I think, more device support and much better UI um, and stuff like that. Uh, but the advantage of using it again um, compared to the, you know, to the regular software of of uh, Ledger and Trezor and such is first of all is privacy. Because you don't have to send them all your data and the XPUBs, etc. Can you explain um, a little bit, like for the average user, like the XPUB, oh, yeah, pub, sure. ZPUB, <laughs> you yeah, know, all this? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So XPUB, YPUB, ZPUB, they're all 
the difference between them doesn't really matter for the average user, so we won't get deep into that. Um, but the, the idea of, of XPub, I would just call it XPub, is to allow it um, is to allow basically to generate um, all all the all the addresses from from a single like from a single address uh, to generate all addresses of of an uh, of from a seed. So there's the seed word like 24 words. Uh, from that you can derive that uh, uh, that XPub that um, which is also called the, a master public key. And from that, you can uh, eventually derive all addresses that mm -hmm. you actually use to receive payments. So when you when you use the uh, like the uh, software of Trezor, like the the, um, the Trezor website to to access your funds, they also send the the this XPub, this master public key to their servers uh, in order to. Uh, track your, you know, to track your balances, to give you access to your balances. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I don't know what, the, what, what they actually do in their servers, but at least to, to give you your balances and such. Um, but this also leaks them all, all, the, all your private uh, information regarding uh, your addresses. So because they have your, your master public key, they can derive all the addresses that you can use uh, and because we use standard um, derivation paths, it's very trivial to just uh, derive all addresses that someone uses and track their balances. So basically, by giving them access to this master public, you are exposing your entire like net worth, which is uh, which you keep on the trezor, which is very bad uh, in terms of security. Um, so that's one thing that Spectres allows you to avoid. Uh, at least if you use it correctly, uh, it allows you to avoid uh, this privacy leak um, and use it directly your node. So you get the, this privacy benefit, but also the security benefit of using your own node, uh, which is the main reason to, to use your own node. Uh, it for like in simple terms, it is to verify all the transactions that you receive to verify your own economic activity. So when you receive Bitcoin, if you use the uh, like the default software, uh, you trust uh, Trezor to 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 tell you if a transaction was valid or not, if it was mined or accepted or not. Um, if you trust them, you it means that you were at least implicitly accepting their rules. So the rules of Trezor could be the same as the as the rules that you believe that Bitcoin should have, uh, the, like the current Bitcoin consensus rules. But they might be tricking you, or someone might hack their systems uh, and change that uh, and make you and make them uh, give you false information. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you know, draw, don't trust verify. So you should run your own node in order to be able to, to, to verify all the, all the transactions that you receive. Um, so you can't really do that uh, very well with when you use uh, the default GUI of Trezor. Uh, but what you can do is when you run your full node, if you use Spectre, then it, Spectre uh, takes everything from your own uh, local node. So uh, all the balances come directly from your node. So they're your trustless. Uh, so you're verifying all the uh, balances and all the transactions. Let me ask you again. So Spectre is not only like uh, UX UI improved, you know, for the average user, the noob, you know, but a mm -hmm. lot of functions and features are by default. Are you saying so in order to enhance the privacy features or? I mean, would I need it in order to prevent the leakage of, of privacy data? I mean, if I have a, my node and I, and I collect it and I connect, for example, the Trezor via the Electrum wallet through my full node, is that, mm -hmm. is that still no, so, on the so same from side? Electrum, uh, no. So on, on Electrum, again, I think Electrum gives you um, the same privacy because you're using your full node. So the, I think in terms against Electrum, it is mostly UI uh, and a few, I guess, few features too. But I think it's mostly uh, UI against uh, Electrum specifically. 
has it already been released the, uh, the the specter or are you still working on it i mean can you demonstrate uh, yeah so when... yes um yeah let me see if i if can, can i can try share, to open at least that. for the youtube viewers that would be awesome mm -hmm. yeah sure so let me try to open some um direct test here it should be available Because anything, you know, that, that helps the user, especially the noobs, <laughs> um, make it, uh, you know, more mm -hmm. user-friendly and, and have the user experience improved and the user interface, you know, less complicated and, and maybe some of the features sure. by default. So... How long have you been working on it? Um, yeah, so I think Stepan uh, started the project, I think it was this summer, if I remember correctly, but I started working it, on it like well, probably two months ago, but I'm not sure exactly about the date. Um, I think like the, the first contribution was when they, had, like the day that they released it, so I just added uh, the ability to change the um the block explorer so i wanted to connect it i have the full node running with uh, uh, btc rp6 explorer uh, or bitcoin rp6 explorer i don't remember the exact name they have it on my node too so i yeah. wanted to use that with with spectre so but it was by default connected to blockstream.info uh, so that was like my first contribution. And uh, after that, like a month or two after this first contribution, I started doing that more uh, more intensively, I guess. So yeah, here I loaded it up. Let me see if I can share my screen. Oh, it says host disabled uh, attendees share screen. Oh, let me just make you to co-host. Yeah. Okay. Does it work now? Yeah, just um, give me a second to Okay, I hope I won't be leaking uh, too much of my data here. Yeah, just make sure. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. if it's too sensitive, we can, you know, do this separately. Yeah, no, I think I think it's it's fine. But yeah, let's try. Um, ah, I need to to restart the the uh, Chrome in order to allow screen sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, it means I will need no. It means I I will need to quit the the chat. Let me see. No. Oh, yeah, maybe I can. Do you see that? Uh, hold on. It's something. Yeah. No, I see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah. So this is like uh, just a, a reg test. So yeah, you see. So this is like um, a reg test just for uh, for newcomers. It's like. A, a demo Bitcoin network running on your local machine. So you can do whatever you want with it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is like a simple wallet um, inspector, just, uh, you know, just imagine that they connected some hardware wallet to use. Um, so I can see my transactions here. Um, basically, they are all, every, all the data is coming from the full node. So whatever it is, the transactions here, um or the you know the balances everything is from the full node um you have addresses view where you can see your uh sorry where can you see your addresses um second slow mm -hmm. Does it have sort of a dashboard like on my note, like, um, or, or you can't show it right now, right? I mean, or is it, 
No, I, I mean, it's just, it, it opens right away, I guess. So there's no, nothing exactly to show as a dashboard. Um, mm -hmm. So if you go, you have this like uh, settings here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this like just the settings of, of connecting to the node. Uh, if you want, this is just to, to make sure that the node is running and everything is connected successfully. Um, so yeah, let's open yeah, and let's just get into the wallet. So we have, okay, this is like unconfirmed transactions. If you go to addresses, yeah. So I can see here my, my entire address history. So addresses uh, that I created, that I generated, I can use labels here. Um, yeah. So Ben, uh, you know, I'm not a techie, so I'm going to ask you some really, you know, naive and stupid questions maybe, but this is basically just to connect uh, um, my, my, um, why is it say k <laughs> Who is k -Von? Yeah, I just edited the label. Oh, okay. I just edited so... the label. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So it's basically like if you have um, a bunch, one or two um, or many harder wallets, you can easily connect it to to your Spectre, right? Um, uh, yes, yes. So instead of using yeah, instead of using the default, I, if you want just a, a normal wallet, you can just use the Spectre and instead of the um, instead of the default uh, option of the of the company providing. Um, yeah, or if you want a multi-sig, you can do that too. And, and in that way, you can preserve your privacy as, as much as possible. Is that the, the, the whole point of... Yes, yes, yes. So uh, it's preserving privacy, um, security of the full node. And yeah, I think it's privacy and security are the main concerns here. Um, and also I think the UI for like, for using multi six at least is is the best that mm -hmm. I've used. Okay, but it's not for lightning, right? You cannot connect. Can you connect no, like no, lightning? No, this is not for light. This no. is just online. Hot wallets. Okay. Yeah, there is. So there's no like hot wallet support uh, with Spectre right now. Mm -hmm. We want to add that like in the future, but right now there's no hot wallet support, and Lightning doesn't really work yet with you know with cold wallets. So. There's no mm -hmm. lightning support right now or something. Okay. Could you, could you like guide us or to guide me or walk, walk me and, and my listeners through like if someone, let's say specifically like someone like me, like who has a, my note, my note, full note, um, mm -hmm. what, what, what would you do? I and mean, what, what are the first steps that you need to, uh, is that like a self-explanatory? Like you just, you just download it. Yeah. You, it's, what do you do then afterwards? Um, yeah. So now, so we currently like, I hope that it will be added uh, like as part of, of the default apps in, in my node soon. Like I think we should check that out, but it probably will, uh, I believe. Uh, it's already added to, by default to, um, to Raspberry Blitz, if you know that. Which one? Uh, which is sim uh, Raspberry Blitz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I heard of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's similar to, to my node and it's already there. So for that stuff, I think it's just uh, just a matter of time until it will come with that. But in order to, to install that, um, you'd go to, to the GitHub page currently and just, you know, we have some detailed instructions where you can uh, join the um, Telegram group to get some help. Like I hope in the, in the future it will be as easy as installing a simple app, but it's, it currently isn't. I guess mm -hmm. it's okay. So it's more harder, so like it's just... so right now, Ben. It's really for more like more a little bit more experience or at least you know yeah. Uh, so immediate. It's, yeah, I guess yeah. right now it's not. It's a, for a bit more experience, but mm -hmm. the, I think soon it will be like uh, much easier to, to run that. Are there any more like potentials, possibilities? Are there any? Uh, is there a roadmap to to Spectre or is there an, a plan for interoperability with other you know whatever? Uh, let's say, I don't know, BTC pay server for merchants. You know, I'm a huge fan of, you know, of the adoption, uh, 
boost by merchants. If, if, if we can get more merchants on board, uh, making it as, as easy as possible because they don't have the time. I am talking to people around me. They don't have the time. They would love to. They would love to offer that. And, and you know, eventually I, I want to make it more practical for people like, like and, and have a, you know, maybe a, a couple of people within Austria, anywhere where people get like direct support, you know, they get, these people would then get paid for their expertise, for supporting and, and advising the, uh, the merchants. Uh, so it needs a sort of a, you know, a, there's a, there's a process to this whole thing. And I'm mm -hmm. trying to do yeah, you know, my so, best to educate. Yeah, sure. So right now I'm not sure there is uh, some roadmap, um, at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, maybe Stepan has, has something in mind, but not something that, that I know of. Um, right, like right now specifically, we're trying to to just um, stabilize the, the the system and um, make it more robust, like uh, in the background. So this is something we're working off, uh, on right now. But uh, in in the future, there are like many many features we are thinking of, um, like I, as I said, like uh, better installation, um, maybe even like something similar to um, uh, like some uh, something like like Wasabi has uh, the um, default node running, like when Wasabi recently added like full node uh, by default, like built in. So maybe something like that also. So there are a few features which we're thinking of, but I'm not aware of a specific core mode uh, right now. What about Samurai Wallet? Because, you know, I'm a huge fan of Samurai because it's really, it's user-friendly. They've really done a tremendous job with the mobile mixing. On, I mean, it's, and it's an online wallet. It's not, you know, there's, they don't, they don't even, they don't even intend to, they don't even think about lightning and they have, they must have good reasons for that. Uh, so they just focus, you know, on, people having, you know, a Samurai wallet with mm -hmm. Whirlpool mobile mixing. It's, it's by default, you know, it's, it's literally by default. I mean, everything it's, it's, uh, uh, just by the, you know, press of a button, you just mix your coins. It's, it's awesome. And you can just literally out, out uh, after post mix or from a post mix wallet. Um, uh, uh, yeah, you can just spend it. Right. So it could, could it theoretically like be connected to the specter? Um, so I, you mean like, uh, mixing from Spectre, is that like the question exactly or? No, I don't know. I'm just asking, you know, what, what other, you know, possibilities are there I mean, with, with, uh, you know, in, in connection or interoperability with other yeah, I guess. hardware mm -hmm. wallets? Yes. Or so if, I guess if you are mixing like, like, right, there's this feature where you can mix the, directly into another wallet so you can mix you can receive funds and then mix them directly into a cold storage. So I guess this is something Spectre could be useful for. So you can you, you use Spectre to, to generate like uh, a cold multisig wallet, for example, uh, generate the address and then use that address to, you know, with your Samurai or Wasabi to, to receive funds into that. Okay. Um, like, yeah, so, but I like direct coin join or something is, is very far, I guess, because you need for, for that, we need um, a, a hot wallet, at least right now, which, which we don't get the uh, support. Mm -hmm. Because I think that would be important once uh, the merchant adoption, you know, uh, sort of um, uh, starts um, uh, accelerating. Um, how how would you go about like when it comes to merchant adoption? What, what what do you think are the basic fundamental questions we need? Because the the main concern, as I've been talking you know, with other people now on my show, is like they uh, you know uh, for example, my girlfriend also has a business, but she said you know like any merchant they they need to co integrate that into their fiat uh, um, uh, accounting system, cat whatever you want to call it, cash system, accounting system, also mm -hmm. for tax reasons. Um, do you have like a vision, like how, how this should, you know, be, be educated on, instructed, supported with, um, and you know, mm -hmm. what about UX UI features? 
yeah i think right now like in general not just the, the accounting stuff but very like in general um i i see a lot of people working on, on great products like strike is a great example of mm. just very very simple to use uh bitcoin uh, um bridge kind of um unfortunately strike so, is going to take a time till till yeah, they come to U european yeah, union right the... of course and even more time until it comes here to israel i mean we don't even have like apple pay or something mm. um but yeah so i guess i guess the problem is that regulatory framework uh, takes time so each you know a lot of the work i guess with with strike is probably at least i assume that is probably with the regulation with working with banks uh, etc so you know that this is a, a major challenge i guess because it's it's not easy to to work with banks it's not easy to get uh, licenses stuff like that um but if you're just if you just want to accept Bitcoin, I guess the, the easiest thing right now is to, you know, to set up a BTC pay server or, you know, even just, uh, you, you know, you, have, you can use, uh, um, even if, well, if you receive payments regularly, at least BTC pay, BTC pay server is probably the best choice. But if not, then you could use something simpler like Wasabi Wallet or Spectre um or some other wallet like that uh for accounting specifically i'm very unfamiliar with, with tools in that it just that regulations and uh everything related to taxes make me a bit sick it's nothing like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> personally just it's just that i can't like my my parents are both accountants and i can't listen to them ever talking about their jobs because i can i just can't listen to talks about taxes and stuff so yeah i'm not too familiar with solutions in that area but i'm sure if there aren't there are probably solutions coming there mm -hmm. uh, because i think it's very important you know to to greater adoption and I'm sure that wherever there is an opportunity to, to make money, entrepreneurs will will exploit it. So if there is uh, if there is demand to you know for accounting with Bitcoin, I'm sure there will be uh, products coming in. I mean, I heard uh, BTC Visor has something called Auto Transmuter. Is that like do you, are you acquainted with that? Are you familiar with it? Does it convert like the Bitcoin instantaneously into fiat? Is that what it is about? I have uh, to. I, I think I think I heard something like that. Um, so I'm really not familiar with that. I think I just saw it on Twitter or something. Uh, but I guess it will it will probably face the same the same problems as as strike. You know, so like working with banks. Uh, which will take time to to get uh, to get everywhere and you know uh, all the usual problems of working with banks. Yeah, yeah, just too many questions. Um, um, for example, mm -hmm. I was going to say uh, the uh, you know the, the the first steps is really important. I think for for people just just to know you know where do they start and um, how do they how do they implement the infrastructure um because you know there's just the you know there's just so many common mistakes people make and it's you know even if you like go exactly after procedure it, it's just uh, you know too many irregular irregularities anomalies <laughs> that can happen mm -hmm. in this process and i've you know i've just witnessed it myself experienced myself by setting up this full node you know i had to figure out and then I wrote an article about it, you know, just, just to lament and complain about the whole procedure because it's not user friendly. It's not really, uh, you know, just so many issues that can come up. I had to figure out for myself that my router provider has to, had to act, had to deactivate my IPv6 in order to connect, in order to uh, proceed with the port forwarding, you know, and mm -hmm. If you if you don't figure that out by yourself, you know you're lost. I mean, so I thought if I can't do it, you know how how is how is the average person out there? And I, I mean, I'm not a techie, you know, to be uh, to be clear again. So, uh, you know, that's the whole intention behind these talks with you and others is to 
somehow break things down and not take things for granted that we think or you think or other you know techies or product developers think that it's you know just just you know just throw some bones at them it's like you know just listen to this and read that and you know watch these videos and i think it's a little bit overwhelming for people and i'm trying to mm -hmm. you know simplify the process break it down and uh, and i'm aware you know we still have to go a long way to improving user experience user interface this this whole up handling of 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 this new technological yeah evolution Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still so much work to, to do in terms of usability. Um, yeah, so currently there are, I guess there are many people like, like you that try to, to bridge that gap of knowledge. So yeah, you and there's, uh, I think you mentioned in the, in the beginning of the talk, so uh, Ben from BTC Sessions, which does great videos. So I guess there are many people who try to, to bridge a gap, but there's so much that is, you know, that is not yet there. Uh, there's so much work still to be done. Yeah. I mean, practical speaking again, you know, I think it's possible, even though maybe it's not that much, it's, you know, not that much um, technically scalable in a way, but I think if a merchant, for example, really wanted to implement a, an alternative opt-in you know, additional pay, uh, Bitcoin payment infrastructure, they could do that, but they would need mm -hmm. direct support. So th that's why I proposed and I, you know, I wrote to BTC pay server, to all the techies, to all the people out there and say, Hey, you know, I, I understand you guys, you know, don't have the resources, the time, but, and, and they, you know, they should all be fairly compensated, but I would, you know, if it were up to me, I would form groups like special task forces, like people yeah. who, uh, who would, um, who would who would uh, you know who would be directly uh, supporting the merchants uh, uh, you know at, at, in their businesses in their shops, and some of the questions can be you know handled and answered uh, online you know sort of a support hotline or via Zoom or whatever Telegram, but I think for the average mer merchant or user out there it needs a direct involvement, like a direct uh, advisory, you know, help. Like, mm -hmm. would it be one or two people, like uh, sort of in, in the framework of a support package, you know? And, and, you know, I mean, maybe it takes a half a day, maybe a full day, it doesn't matter, but but I'm just saying the, the immediate, like uh, an immediate support team that it's, that is, you know, a face-to-face -face support team. You know that that helps the merchant yeah. set up everything, and if there are still technical details or anything, you know, uh, coming up, uh, like uh, any technical issues or problems or questions, then they can still, you know, whatever, do it online or via telephone or, you know, so mm -hmm. just for the sake of effectivity. And I'm a huge fan of activity and practicality, and this is not practical right now. It's way too. Mm -hmm. This is, you know. Uh, uh, putting up the bar way too high and expecting too much of the average user of the merchant. And at the end of the day, what do we want? We want people to use it, to understand, to educate them, but it needs sort of a, you know, uh, an educational and practical approach to that. So that's why I wanted to ask you, what's your approach to that? What would you, how would you do that? Because the tools yeah, are already so there, that's... you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really hard uh, to answer that, especially when you consider that there are a few solutions, uh, if you call that solutions, which are, uh, you know, what, easier to use, but they're not up to the to the Bitcoin ethos. Let's call it that way. So you could emerge. I've, I'm not sure, if, like, what tools uh, Coinbase, for example, uh, offers for merchants, but I do think they offer some, um, you know, and other such companies. Yeah. Uh, Coinbase, BitPay, etc. But they all, you know, the, the problem is not just to make sure users uh, join, it's that they join in the proper way, so in the right way, so not falling for such scams and, you know, and, uh, mm. <laughs> you know, and such shit companies. Um, so it's not just about making sure they, they join, it's making sure they understand how to avoid the, the bad stuff. Yeah. Uh, how to use it privately and how 
how to use it securely and how to verify themselves and why it's important that they run a full node in the first place when they can, you know, they can, someone can start accepting Bitcoin with, with Coinbase account or something uh, and don't understand why it's a bad thing. Uh, so, the, you know, we must first explain to them why they can't use the, the easy um, solutions, kind of, uh, but why they should use the, the proper solutions, you know. I run a full node themselves, uh, keep your, keep them, uh, their own keys, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so once, I guess, I guess this is something which Bitcoin Twitter does pretty great to just make sure, you know, the, and the Bitcoin community in general, to make sure uh, people stay away from, from such stuff. Uh, but obviously you can't, you can't compete with, with money, you know, just people, shit posting on Twitter for free can't compete with with billion dollar companies I guess and their marketing budgets um, and their UI and customer support and so on um, but I think so far uh, people have been doing fairly well with that um, so you know we can't uh, we can't directly compete with them, but with with the budgets that they have at least. Uh, but I think this is something that you know one user at a time, one merchant at a time, uh, just you know, just as a as community, as people working uh, and on this uh, stuff, people uh, enthusiastic uh, about Bitcoin, uh, just help newcomers, you know, uh, set up their own node. Uh, I think it's still in, in, in an altruistic level because I think right now it's still hard to, you know, to, to get uh, to, um, you know, you, I don't think you can build like a very, maybe like a small company, but not something very large uh, and certainly not something like Coinbase, um, you know, from, uh, from uh, without, you know, um, sorry, without, uh, uh, Offering their, uh, such service, um, so you can't compete currently with Coinbase and their you know, and build something like that. So maybe a small company. Um, but right now, I guess the I guess the point is just that it's still something more altruistic. You know, um, people working like for a small fee or like for free, uh, helping and contributing. Right, right. I get you. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so the whole, uh, so the plan would be, you know, because I also also talked to Sven Sven Schneiders, you know, who who also lives in Vienna, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. the idea is uh, that wherever you know in Austria, whether in Vienna or other cities or surrounding areas, um, I could do, for example, maybe even in, in cooperation with Bitcoin Austria. You know, this nonprofit sort of organization now in in Austria. Uh, I know these people well, and we would do uh, more of a, you know, general information workshops, like educational workshops, mm -hmm. where it's about, you know, money or the possibilities and the, the you know, the, the options they have. And, and, and then once, you know, once people have the understanding or, the, you know, the, the fundamental understanding and, and, uh, and they know you know, these are the possibilities, then we, then I could refer them, you know, to experts like like you yourself or Sven, you know, like who are more techies or who are more experienced and who know, you know, uh, the intricacies, you know, of, of all these mm -hmm. procedures, right? And then really send these people like one, two, three people from maybe, you know, from different, um, from different projects. I mean, that would be ideal. Somebody, for example, from BTC Pay, BTC Pay server, somebody from my node, or somebody at least, someone who, who is familiar with these, with these, um, uh, software or, or um, uh, applications, right? Mm -hmm. And also having yeah. experience, what could go wrong? What you know? What, what do they? What do they need to be careful about? And really teach them face to face, you know, uh, in in form, mm -hmm. you know, uh, f uh, you know, for for a fair compensation. And I think that that this way we can we can somehow accelerate you know the, the educational process and the implementation process mm -hmm. with small merchants you know shop owners yes, businesses yes. Whatever. so 
yeah i think like i think the the mod uh, the model of like free open source software have proven that it's it's absolutely possible in in an altruistic uh, way to you know to grow a community and uh, you know help each other to you know just like um I think most, uh, or at least a large portion of the contributors in open source projects in the Bitcoin space don't really get get money for that. Like at least I don't get anything for, for doing the open source work. Yeah, that's why. Uh, and they still do it. Just yeah, I just do it uh, kind of altruistically. So it's I think uh, also helping new users. It's definitely possible for like for free or for like a, sim a small fee, yeah. uh, you know, whatever, to, to get a relatively large number of people who, who really understand the, the subject and can help newcomers. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's, a, it's definitely something possible. Um, and yeah, I hope to see more, you know, more work on that. Yeah, because that's I, the only I way I can imagine, Ben, that. to to you know to speed up the process of ink, uh, uh, you know to 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 at least start with incremental uh, Bitcoin denominated, uh, you know, transactions, business uh, trades, mm -hmm. you know, just incrementally, even if it's just a minor fraction of the whole business, like like just to start to helping, you know, um, this whole system, uh, the merchants, the businesses, the economy. The transition into the circular economy you know i think the sooner that we mm -hmm. start the the, uh, the less friction there will be in the new future yes. once everything you know this uh, shit storm starts <laughs> yes yes i absolutely agree i think i think moving to bitcoin uh, is proving itself you know as a wise decision time and again i uh, as as you can see people who move to, to bitcoin like not just early but most of the time i guess already if you if you move to bitcoin you probably made the wise decision even if you just look at the price uh and definitely if you look at the, the broader picture at least in my opinion but even so-called objectively if you just look at the price it probably was a good idea uh if uh, i think businesses are that will start accepting even just like a small fraction in Bitcoin will massively benefit from that in the future. Uh, so this is not just to, to promote the, the ethos of Bitcoin. I think this is a, a, a huge personal gain to, to make for, you know, for every business that will accept that. Um, yeah, I think this is, a, you, you know, just starting from a small fraction of the merchants accepting just a, a small fraction of the transactions in in bitcoin i think and and going from there will be the the approach you know yeah so we're going to continue our talk anyway in a panel discussion with with this um other dude uh, the kids um, i'm going to call him kids because he's anonymous um and <laughs> on thursday and uh yeah and uh looking forward to that thanks so much ben for your time and uh i think you know i think if we continue with these talks it's um you know we can we can somehow trigger more and more people you know and because everybody has mm -hmm. you know different incentives and motivations or questions or you know insecurities when it comes to this yeah what do you call it like mm -hmm. technological issues or or ad adoption issues you yeah. know mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So thank you for having me and yeah, looking forward to for, uh, Thursday. All right. Thanks so much. Bye, Ben. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right. Really enjoyed this talk. It's um, Ben is really one of the uh, really uh, knowledgeable and, and uh, not only Austin economist and he wrote a bunch of articles. Check out his articles on medium.com slash Ben underscore Kaufman. I'm going to put those in the show notes again. And let me know what you think. You can find him, please follow him on Twitter. Uh, follow all of us on Twitter. Uh, it's uh, underscore Ben Kaufman. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, subscribe, follow me, retweet, whatever you do. Thanks so much, with, uh, thanks so much for supporting, for listening. I'll see you soon again. Total Connector signs up.